Welcome to Grace Change Church. Service will start momentarily. If you would like to meet us in person, we are located at 467 Denby Boulevard, Newport News, Virginia. Service starts at 1130. However, doors open at 11. If you enjoy our service, please like, comment, and subscribe to all of our channels. And we'll see you soon. really and give him all that he deserves he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords he is the great i am he is jehovah rapha our healer he is jehovah jireh our provider come on let's lift up a sound we honor you jesus we reverence you jesus we glorify you jesus we honor you jesus oh king of kings have your way yes lord jesus oh king of kings have your way Come on, let's do it all together. We honor you, Jesus. And we don't take this opportunity for granted. We thank you for every opportunity that we get to extend our hands, to open up our mouths. Come on, all over this room, let us participate as one body, one sound, unified, ready to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, let's honor him with our worship. Let's honor him with our praise. Let's honor him with our words. Let's honor him with our actions. God, we lift your name when we bless you now. Oh Lord, we do love. We honor your name, Jesus. We honor your name, Jesus, Lord. 
all over this room for a moment. Can we just slip our hands in the air? And just begin to say something to him. Just begin to honor him with your words. Ooh, yes, Lord. Come on, fill this space. We honor your name. With the fruit of your lips, come on, offer something to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Ooh, all we want is heaven to sit in this room. Yes, Lord. Let there be a sound that comes out from the depths of your soul. God, we cry out to you. Spirit of the living God, you can have your way. Rest, rule, and abide within this place. This is your throne room. This is where you can be seated. This is where you can be seated. Spirit of the Lord, be in the room. Lord. Oh. Come on right here. Fill this room up. We are you. right here our father all of heaven adores your name sing louder that this place is with grace can you hear it the sound of heaven touching us yeah the sound Sound. Come on, one voice, that's all singing. I'll bother. Come on, all of heaven. Let this praise here with praise. Imagination. 
nation against the will of God. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, spirit breaker. Come on, let's raise it right here. Come on. Sing in heaven come. Heaven come down. Come on, lift it up right here. In Jesus, born of heaven, Yes, Lord. We need revival. Hey, we need 
we want your spirit to eradicate some things. We want your spirit to eradicate some things that's on the inside of us. We want to break out in the room. We want your spirit, God, to move like you want to move, to do what you want to do, Lord, to move like you want to move, to do what you want to do, Lord, to move like you want to move, hey, to do what you, to move like you want to move, like you want to do what you want to do, move like you want to move, move like you want to do. You wanna do, move like 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 you wanna move, do what you wanna do, yes, move like you wanna move, do what you wanna do, move like you wanna move, do what you wanna do, move like you wanna move, hey. Jesus, our Father, all of heaven, born your name. Hey, one voice, that's all. Our Father, all of heaven, stay by there. Oh, sing out. Lord, in the river there 
there is freedom, yes, Lord. In the river, there is freedom, yes, Lord. Come on, see the jump in the river. Jump in the river. Jump in the river. saving God we honor your name just for a moment can we just bask in his presence for a moment can we all just close our eyes right here and just begin to open up your mouth and fill this space come on our hands are lifted our worship is lifted our praise is lifted unto your name it's unto your name to your name, sing to your name, Jesus, to your name. Yes, Lord. So even in this moment, Father, we thank you and we adore you. We honor you for who you are. For being our Savior. For being our God and our friend. So come on right here, even in this moment. I'm going to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad to see you this morning. Come on, turn to another neighbor and say, I'm so glad to see you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so I will rejoice and be glad in it. Did anybody come to bless the Lord this morning? You ought to turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to a great change. Come on, you ought to turn to another neighbor and tell them, welcome to a great change. You know that we serve an amazing God. Come on, lift up those hands and honor the Lord. Woo! He's so amazing. He's so beautiful. He's so worthy. And we give him all the glory and all the honor. Y'all know that's a little bit different, okay? Um, I'm, I'm grateful because I've turned down my plate in 2023. <laughs> so in 2024, we're going to do a financial fast, okay? You're going to challenge yourself to a period of intentional frugality, cutting out non-essential expenses. So all of those extra things, y'all know the stops that we like to make, the Starbucks, the fast food, all of those extras. Okay, we're going to do a financial detox. That means, okay, we're going to help ourselves save money and also foster an appreciation for mindful consumption. Hmm. Discover the freedom that comes with cutting back for forward living. And you'll hear a little bit more about that later, but I'm excited for our fast forward. And then we have our Good Grace campaign coming up. Somebody say Good Grace. Good grace. Okay, that's going to be launching next Sunday. That's going to be fun, y'all. This is our church outreach initiative to impact our surrounding community with acts of kindness. So they encourage a daily delivering of offering generosity and kindness to all. We will engage ooh, and embrace in our local coffee shops, businesses, stores. And, y'all, we get the opportunity to wear our grace merch. 
okay? So if you haven't got your shirt, your sweatshirt, I know I got mine. I'm looking forward to wearing mine. Y'all, you can go to the website and purchase your Grace merch. So if you haven't gotten it, you got to make sure you get it. The ultimate goal is to employ our five guiding pillars of honor, honesty, good health, good hospitality, and good hope with the return of making disciples. And we just want to be a blessing to our community. That's important, y'all. So you can register and purchase your Good Grace sweatshirt at the website, www.gracechanges.com. Okay. And then in the coming months, we'll be adding to our worship encounters the art of dance. Oh, that's awesome. Woo! So you're going to experience the joy of expressing faith through movement as we soar into a rhythmic expression of honoring him. If you are interested in serving, sign up on the website as well at gracechanges.com so you'll be able to be a part of the dance ministry. That is awesome. You can use the Connect tab to volunteer in dance. And then on Monday the 22nd, ooh, we got another prayer night coming up at 7.30, Monday Night Raw, okay, with Pastor Richardson. It's going to be awesome, a night of prayer and worship. We're going to seek God for a divine encounter. How many people have been to the Raws in the past? Okay, you already know, okay, he's about to go down. <laughs> so we're excited for that. You do not want to miss this prayer moment if you have not been if you've been looking for something to to get engaged in that prayer moment will bless your life okay and in january it's a great way to set yourself up for the year so we encourage you to join us for raw and now we're going to get ready to do our giving y'all so we're going to go right into our giving. So we want you to get your mind and heart prepared to give. Y'all know we are a tithing church. Say we tithe. Okay, we give our tithe. We give 10%. And we encourage you to be a blessing. You know, I can honestly say that I have reaped rewards from tithing in this house. And um, in 2023, I know that we have a lot of things we could say about the year, but for me, if I'm honest, I would call 2023 my year without a paycheck, okay? <laughs> because unexpected to me, I went through a season of not having income. But I want y'all to know I didn't miss a mortgage payment. I didn't miss a bill payment. I didn't miss anything, and I didn't even know I could go that long without getting paid. Come on. Some of y'all know you expect your check, okay? And so when I went through that season, I did not even know I could go that long without having income. But God was faithful. Come on, y'all. God was faithful. And I really believe it's because when we put our tithes in the house, he says, prove me. And so we don't know what's coming, but our tithe is a way that God can show us I'm faithful to you. I am faithful to you, and so I encourage you to tithe in this house, and we're asking everyone to give. The Bible says, giving it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So we encourage you to give. We're asking everyone that can to give a $40 seed, and believe when you give that seed that you are going to put something in the ground that's going to reap a harvest. And I'm going to say one more thing before I finish. I was thinking yesterday about some things that I would had been praying God to do, for God to do in my life. And um, I was thinking, and all of a sudden a thought came to my mind, said, look how much time has passed. It hasn't happened yet. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, Mel, the enemy tries to get you fixated on time because he's the only one that's got to worry about that. And I said, what? And he said, Mel, think about it. Think about it. Even when Jesus was uh, ministering and you would, he would encounter demons and they would say, it's not your time. What are you doing here? And he said, Mel, the enemy tries to get you fixated on time because he is the only person that got to worry about it. He's on a clock. The rest of us, we ain't got to worry about it. We got a God that supplies all of our needs. God is not sitting in heaven anxious, bothered, concerned, and worried. The only person that's got to pay attention and say, is it time yet? Is it time yet? Is the enemy because his time is running out. And so I encourage you today to remember that if you're waiting for God to do something, we're to be good stewards of our time, but we don't got to worry about it. And so I encourage you, listen, if you're believing God to do something, so in faith, God is not stressed. 
God is not bothered. God is not scared. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. And my seed, right, is the thing that I do in faith for the promises of God. So I'm going to pray and ask that as we give, the waves are on the screen. God would bring confirmation in your spirit that is going to come to pass. And moving forward, you will not stress about how long it's been or what you haven't seen yet or what you're waiting on. But you will have complete confidence that God is going to do everything that he promised he's going to do. I'm not to be stressed about the time. Be anxious for nothing. All right, join me in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to give in this house. I thank you that I can stand up here in 2024 and say I have income when I didn't in 2023. God, I thank you that you've shown yourself strong and mighty in my life. And I come into agreement with every person tithing in faith that things are going to happen in their life. I thank you for every person who is stepping out and giving in this time and season. Lord, open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing we have not room enough to fill. And let us remember, Lord God, that your word is true. Your promises are yea and amen. What you say you are going to do. We never have the doubt, the confidence of your word. It is so. It's going to happen. And God, we praise you now, God, for seed for the sower, God. Every person who is desiring to give and may not have it at this moment, we thank you that they mark this moment in their minds and that they will be able to come back and give you glory when the seed releases out of their hand. God, we thank you that every need is met. There is no lack in this house. You supply every single one of our needs. We thank you that goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. And you are literally continuing to show up in ways we have not expected. So bless this offering on today. Bless the giving of tithes on today, God. Every need met in this house in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. All right, you can give this time at the basket. And if you are giving and you are doing it electronically, come touch the basket. Make sure you take advantage of the opportunity. To connect with the anointing that's in this house. Yeah. Oh. Yes, Lord. family this is your pastor and i know you're upset because i'm not there today i love you that much as well but i'm on a ministry assignment and i pray that today you will still open your hearts allow god to illuminate your mind because pastor cedric rouson is getting ready to give you a word i know it's tailored for your situation 
God already told me today is going to be your day where you receive breakthrough, healing, deliverance that's going to follow with a sign and a miracle this week for you. Now, listen, while I'm not here, I still want to make sure you understand we are starting our fast tomorrow. We're starting our fast tomorrow. So you're going to get these accountability bands that's going to help you navigate through this week and next week until the 31st. And on the 31st, we will cut these bands together. We will cut these bands together. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But the band that's coming to your life is going to bring some level of accountability to make sure you know that while it's hard to do this financial fast for some or easy to be do whatever the case may be, you're going to look at this band and say, I got to keep on doing this. I got to keep on making sure family depends on this. My life depends on this accountability. And so this is going to help us stay disciplined while we're in this financial fast. I want you to take that band. For some of you all, I want you to wear the band. For some, you say, I don't feel like I don't want to wear that band, Pastor. I'm not, no pressure, just love. But I want you to have that band, that band visible wherever you are so that if you decide to hit Amazon Prime, you'll see that band and say, I can't do it. If you decide, I, I want to go out to eat and you know we, we save it, you'll see that band and it brings some accountability. We are here to make sure we help you while we're on this financial fast. Listen, I can't wait to be with you virtually for Bible study again. And then I'll be home. Trust me. We're going to have some amazing church. Until then, invite as many people as you can to join Grace Change Church. It's absolutely amazing. Do me a favor. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your minds for the word of the Lord that's getting ready to come through the vessel. Pastor Cedric Rouser. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Grace Change. your hands and give God praise this morning for this is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. The older I get, I keep saying I'm glad to be alive. Like, I, I don't take that for granted anymore. I, I have learned to value and appreciate life because life is so short and you never know when it may be cut off. And so I'm just thankful to the Lord be alive today and grateful. Would you help me thank God for Overseer Richardson? We love you. I honor you. Praying for you. And help me thank God for one of the greatest pastors in the 757. Your man of God and my brother in his absence, Pastor Simon Richardson III. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for the privilege we have of life and thank you for the honor to worship you. Lord, we thank you because we can worship you anywhere, but it's a privilege to be able to worship you in your house, to be gathered with others who call upon your name. But Lord, the song is true, and that is things happen when we call your name. And to be able to call your name with those to whom have a light mind and light spirit is a pleasure. So Lord, thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for the intercession that has gone forth. Thank you for the worship leaders and those who have brought us into your presence. Now, God, since we're here, our prayer is speak to us. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. We need direction. As we are standing at the foot of this new year, looking out over the horizon, not knowing what all will come, but trusting that you have ordered steps for us. Our prayer today, Lord, is that you will order our steps in your word. Show us now what we need to know for the days, the weeks, and months ahead. Thank you in advance that it is by the power of the cross, the foolishness of preaching, that souls are saved. And we pray for preaching power. Lord, I pray you don't punish your people for the frailty of the servant. But let them see beyond the servant and hear what you would say to the church. For this we give you praise and glory. The people who love the Lord say amen. Come on, let's go right to the word of God. I don't want to hold you any longer than you desire to be here. Luke chapter 8. And I'm going to call your attention to a familiar passage of scripture. And if it is your custom, would you stand for the reading of the word of God if you're able to do so? To those of you who are worshiping with us online, thank you for gracing us as well, hanging out with us. Uh, we're thankful to the Lord. Luke chapter 8, and I'm going to look at verses 43 through 48. It's a familiar passage of scripture. 
and I acknowledge that. So uh, I want to, as the old preacher would say, I want to draw some new water from an old well. Now, there are two things that can be horrible uh, when attempting to preach a, a, a passage that a lot of people knows, right? Uh, one is that they uh, try to finish your sentences because they think they know where you're going. And the other is that they tune you out all together because they think they know where you're going. So I want you to just hang along for the ride. Listen to these words as they come to us. I'm going to read from the message translation of the scripture the way that Eugene Peterson puts it because it's so modern in its language. It says, in the crowd that day, there was a woman who for 12 years had been afflicted with hemorrhages. She had spent every penny she had on doctors, but could not one have been able to help her. But, excuse me, but not one had been able to help her. She slipped in from behind and touched the edge of Jesus' robe. At that very moment, her hemorrhaging stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? And no one stepped forward, Peter said, but master, we got crowds of people on our hands. Dozens have touched you. Jesus insisted, no, someone touched me. I felt power discharging from me. When the woman realized she couldn't remain hidden, I love that. When the woman realized she couldn't remain hidden, she knelt trembling before him in front of all the people. She blurted out her story why she had touched him and how at that same moment she was healed. Jesus said, daughter, you took a risk trusting me. I don't know who that's for, but it's for somebody. He says, you took a risk trusting me. And now, somebody say now. And now you are healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. I want to talk for just a, a few moments that I was to share together from the thought free to be. Tell somebody I'm free to be. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Free. I'm free to be. I just returned home. In fact, your pastor and I just returned home. We were together uh, on tour with Dr. Earl Bynum in Italy, and uh, we were there for the better part of two weeks. And uh, it's been several times now that we have been, and each time I find a lesson to take home with me that I didn't have before. In this particular case, we had gotten to Rome, and uh, we were in Rome for three days this time around. And, and uh, they didn't, the, the space where the hotel was didn't have space for our tour bus. And so as a result, we had to park the tour bus at the arena. And we had to catch cabs back and forth between the hotel and the Coliseum. Well, as you can imagine, the cab wasn't always there. And so a couple of times I found myself and Dr. Bynum and some others having to walk the distance <laughs> between the hotel and what basically was about a 12 to 14 minute walk to the arena. And it was in that time that the Lord began to deal with me and speak to me about something that I thought would be apropos for this moment. I started rehearsing this text in my mind as I knew that it would be a part of my journey coming into 2024. But I saw the text through a new lens. We know the text from the position of the woman having an issue of blood, and she's been bleeding, and if you've been to Sunday school at all, you and just about anybody know. People don't even go to church know about the woman with the issue of blood. And you know, She touched Jesus at the hem of his robe and the hem of his garment, and she was healed. But all of a sudden, I realized that the text really shows us a picture of journeys. Everybody say journeys. It was something about my walking and I tried to count my steps too because I wanted all my credit for the walking I had to do. It was something about walking the distance between the hotel and the arena, the arena to the hotel, that I began to see this text through the lens of journey, Jesus' journey. Because originally Jesus didn't show up that day to heal that woman. 
if you study the scripture in Luke 8, Jesus was actually heading down that road because he had got a request from a man named Jairus, uh, who was a, a local ruler, and uh, he wanted Jesus to come, thank you, and to heal his daughter who was 12 and was dying. And here is Jesus en route to Jairus' house when he is rudely interrupted by this woman with the issue of blood. Jesus' journey to Jairus' house took minutes. I thought about the crowd's journey with Jesus because it's clear that this account that we read in the text happens in a crowd, which is why Jesus asked, who touched me? And his disciples said, Lord, there are a whole lot of people around. And I thought about the, the, the journey of the crowd with Jesus, which took moments. Jesus' journey took minutes to Jairus' house. Their journey with Jesus was about moments. But then I saw finally the journey of this woman to get to Jesus. And I wanted to know how long did it take this nameless woman, this we don't even know her name, we only know her by her condition. If I was fishing for a sermon, that would be one right there. That it's amazing how many people uh, love to talk about our conditions who don't even know our name. People will identify you by what they think is wrong with you and never actually look to find out what your true identity is. Because for the record, I am not my condition. Nonetheless, I wondered how long did it take this woman to get to Jesus? And, and some people would not naturally say perhaps 12 years. Uh, some people would say it took her minutes. And I would think that it took her at least 12 years to get to Jesus. It wasn't just the journey from her house to the crowd. I want you to imagine that this woman has been looking for help for as long as she has had the condition. If Jesus went into ministry at around 30 years old, the Bible tells us, and this woman has had an issue for 12 years, then it would mean Jesus was 18 when she got sick. Imagine having a condition that God won't heal because God hasn't yet set up and put in place what your healing is going to demand. And she has to be sick long enough for Jesus to grow up. Here she is taking this journey. And I've, I've probably said this statement here before, but I'll say it again because it's worth it. Uh, to quote uh, a great preacher and mentor uh, for many preachers, Dr. Miles Jones, the late Dr. Miles Jones, he said, when you had to overcome just to come, then your arrival means that much more to you. When you had to overcome something just to get here, then getting here means more to you than it would the person who didn't have to go through anything to get here. The crowds might not have had to have gone through much to get to Jesus, but for this woman, she had to overcome so much to get to Jesus that it makes her arrival in the presence of the Lord that much more meaningful. You can't appreciate arrival until you consider the journey. This is why anytime you arrive in any space, never allow people to make you shrink. Never let people make you think uh, that you have to reduce your testimony or that you can't be grateful for where God has brought you from. Don't you judge my praise till you learn my journey. Because maybe it took you only moments to get here, but it took me a miracle to get here. It took me a while to get to this space in my life, to get to this place in my journey where I'm just confident enough now to trust God like this. Don't you judge my faith because you think it didn't take that much. You don't know how much it took for me to get to this place in my life. For some of us, a year or two or three or four ago, you wouldn't even have been in church in January. You'd be preparing for the football game or you be somewhere trying to overcome the night before but look at what the Lord has done and that here you are now thinking to yourself let me start my year off with the Lord and let me find direction for my life it's been a journey here's her testimony she survived 12 years of bleeding she sustained enough faith during that time to still believe Jesus after nothing worked. Twelve years of disappointment. The text says she spent all she had on doctors and only grew worse instead of better, which means she's been trying to fix this for a long time, and yet 
she still has faith left. I'm trying, trying to hasten. I don't want to keep pulsing. But, but, you know, we celebrate the faith that she has to touch the hem of his garment. But nobody talks about the faith it takes to stay alive after you keep getting your heart broken. It took faith to still be alive when my life has been bleeding out and all of my hope seems to be bleeding out and all of the chances I've tried to take to get across won't work. It took faith not just to touch him. It took faith just to show up. This is, this is, I feel like preaching today. This is why I don't like when we come to church and we try to judge somebody else's praise. Just because my personality might not be as loud as yours or I may not run around the room or maybe I don't know how to do the Holy Ghost two-step like you do. Don't you think that it doesn't mean I don't have a praise? I'm grateful too. You know how I'm grateful? I'm grateful because I know how much it took me just to get here. And sometimes just the tear that rolls down my face is my sign of saying, thank you, Lord. Lord, that you brought me to this but I didn't think I would survive you can shout for the car or the house but for me I'm dancing and praising God or crying tears or lifting hands because I didn't think I would sustain this long medical science says she should have died the society says she should have died nobody was working with her everything was against her no possibility anywhere and she made it anyway and every now and again you ought to thank God that you made it anyway she has sustained for 12 years and then had the audacity to show up anyway. She showed up when they said she shouldn't have been there. Even the Jewish law, the religious law, the law of Moses said that a woman hemorrhaging in such a way like this was considered unclean and she had to be isolated. She could not come out of the house. She had to be quarantined 12 years. We complaining about five days with COVID. 12 years she had to be quarantined, could not come out. If she had children, she couldn't go to her children's uh, uh, birthday parties and recitals, and she couldn't show up to the spaces where life happened. Perhaps if she was a woman of faith, obviously was a woman of faith, she couldn't go to the synagogue and go to church. 12 years, no streaming. No internet, no ability to get the word, no Bible in her hand that she could read to keep herself encouraged. She has shown up despite being an outcast and that's somebody's testimony that you survive, you sustain, and now you have shown up and as a result of her survival, of her sustenance, and of her showing up in one moment, 12 years makes sense. In one moment, what took forever has finally come to culmination. In one moment, it, what it seems like was a lifetime of delay finally turns into a moment of deliverance. And I came with good news to tell you that I know it might have taken a long time, but we serve a God who is able to turn a long process around in one moment. In one moment, she touches the hem. She didn't touch his hand. She didn't touch his heart. She only touched the hem, the fringe of his robe. She had enough faith to believe that if I can touch any part of him, I got him. Beware of people who feel like the only way they can touch Jesus is to get in a high place. Because people who feel like they can only find Jesus in a high place will fight you for a higher seat. People who feel like Jesus only exists up here will then fight to get up here because they think this is where Jesus is. Let me be clear. There's not a stronger anointing on the pulpit than there is at the soundboard. We serve a God whose power will sweep the whole house. That's why somebody right now is streaming in online, but there's something you feel registering in your spirit, and you're not even in the physical building, but the power of God will come right to where you are because there isn't a different anointing on the microphone than there is coming through your computer screen. I'm here to tell you that God is God anywhere God is God. That's how you can feel his glory in the shower. That's how you can feel the anointing driving down the car. That's why you'll be playing your playlist. Had to turn off the, the, the rap music to turn on the worship music. You normally would come home and, and you or normally would in the morning you got to listen to Steve Harvey to get yourself going. But lately you've been feeling this call to worship. It's because the presence of the Lord will meet you right where you are. She touched the hem. Perhaps she touched the hem of his garment because in truth she was bleeding and couldn't walk. The best she could do was crawl. Imagine crawling, first of all, and then secondly, crawling through a crowd. It was a stampede. They were stepping all over her. Her hand. 
hands are being crumbled up under the, the, the weight of people's feet. She is, she is crawling nonetheless while people are, are walking over top of her, perhaps kicking her over, maybe even a trail of blood behind her as evidence of her condition for which she should not be here, and yet she pressed her way anyway. And in one moment, the Bible said, the bleeding stopped. Now, none of this is my point. I'm just warming up the engine. But I got to pause long enough because for somebody who needs to hear it today, I have to announce to you in case you forgot, the bleeding will stop. I know it's harder to believe when you've bled a long time. It's easy to believe God will stop bleeding when you only bled a few minutes. I know it's, a, and when I say bleeding here now, I'm not just talking about a hemorrhaging of a woman's menstrual cycle. I am talking about bleeding when the heart bleeds, when the soul bleeds, when the dream bleeds, when the vision bleeds, when you find yourself discouraged and you begin hemorrhaging in your hope. When you only have bled for a minute, you still believe God. You can dance, perhaps a good prophetic word or make it shift. But when you've been bleeding a long time, you know you've been bleeding a long time when the stuff that makes other people shout makes you sit back and ponder. And you looking at the preacher real suspect because they talking about something. God said in six months, he's getting ready to turn around. And you thinking, child, I was believing six months, 12 years ago. Y'all not going to talk to me this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about when all the little tricks turn around, so $10 and then pray, shout, go across the altar where none of it works anymore because I have tried every spiritual formula I could try and the best it did was keep me alive but it got me no better than I am. I'm here to tell you for a person who's lost that kind of hope, don't think God lied. The bleeding will stop. I know you need a witness to show that the bleeding will stop. So let's see if I can borrow a witness from anybody in here who's ever had God to stop your bleeding. Amen. Have you ever struggled with something that you thought would run over into your future? Have you ever, ha have you ever been nervous to come into a relationship for fear that I'm going to treat this new spouse the way my ex treated me and that the residue of my pain would bleed over into my future and that's why I got a wall up. It's not you. It's really me and I'm nervous to love again and I'm scared to trust again because I believe if I try this that some residue from my past is going to bleed over but you can testify today that here I am happy. Here I am now uh, satisfied. Here I am with joy in my heart. Why? Because we serve a God who will stop the bleeding. We serve a God. Oh, I'm going to stay there and pump it. We serve a God who will stop the bleeding. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long you have to try. We serve a God who will stop the bleeding. And in one moment, the bleeding stopped. Now I'm ready to preach. I'll be seated. Here goes my sermon. I know we know this text because this woman has an issue of blood. Here goes my sermon. It won't be as long as my introduction. There are two issues at hand, however. The bleeding and the being. The bleeding and the being. The bleeding and the being. And what I want to argue today, very simply, and I'll let you go home in time for lunch, is that one can affect the other. Her bleeding affected her being. The bleeding was about the loss of blood, very simply. Appreciate y'all's excellence. Thank you. Let's give our media team a hand. Her bleeding was about the loss, very simply, of blood. But the being was about the loss of everything else that the bleeding of the blood took from her. I'm going to say it again. The bleeding, the issue of blood, was simply about just that, the hemorrhaging or the loss of blood. But she also had a struggle in her being. Why? Because while she was struggling with the loss of blood, everything else in her life got affected. We know it, again, because the text says she spent all she had, Des, on, on doctors and grew no better but grew worse. So she's out of money. By Jewish law, she's been segregated from her family. So if she had a husband, they, he hasn't been able to love her in 12 years. 
if she had children, she hasn't been able to be in community with them for 12 years. If she was a part of any social clubs or belonged in any type of social circle, they haven't had girls' nights out and date nights and girls' nights glam this and glam that. She hadn't been able to go on a vacation. She hadn't been able to do anything for the last 12 years. It's that my being is affected by my bleeding. It's one affects the other, and now I'm in a war. I'm in a war on a different level. You probably never heard of this prophet uh, by the name of Kendrick uh, Lamar. You've never heard that great man of God. Uh, he, he once said, I always thought it was me against the world. And then one day I realized it's just me against me. My bleeding and my being are in a fight. What kind of tension is that when you realize that the real fight is the war going on, the, on on the inside between who you're supposed to be versus who life has let you be? I'm supposed to be happy, but life made me bitter. I'm supposed to be confident, but my bleeding made me insecure. I'm supposed to, to have a head on my shoulders. I mean, I'm educated and I've been to school. Or I've got this and I've got that. And I'm supposed to be walking around with my head in the air. Not, not uppity, but confident. And yet here I am. And when people compliment me, I don't even know how to receive the compliment. That's why I start cowarding down and I start saying stuff when they compliment me. Oh, child. Oh, you look real good. Oh, no, this old dress or this old suit, man. This ain't nothing right here. You know, it's just, it, you know, y'all know how we get when somebody, you, you're talented, you're gifted. You play, you sing, you preach, you, you, you're at work, you perform, other, out, outperform your others on, on your job, and somebody compliments you, and we don't know how to receive it, so we oh, no, 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 you know, I ain't, I ain't really doing nothing. Let me just pause right here and just say this. Insecurity is not humility. It's a crisis of identity. Can I say that one more again? Insecurity is not humility. Insecurity is an identity crisis. God doesn't need you to diminish who he made you to prove you're hum that, that you're humble. God doesn't need you to deny the greatness God put in you just so that you show people that you're humble. Make this year the year that you learn how to just simply say thank you instead of trying to downplay the very thing you gave your life and paid a price for. You the one who did all that homework, went to school, got the degree, got the job, and now when somebody compliments your knowledge, you act like you're dumb. How does that glorify God for you to pretend to be something you're not? You're the one who survived all kinds of abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. Somebody says you're beautiful and now you got, oh no, 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 I ain't much. What do you mean you're not much? Yes, you are much. You're so much that God loves you through all of your pain and all of your hurt and all of the storms you've come through, but the enemies work the okie doke on us. Here you are a man and you were raised without a father, didn't have a father, might not have known your father, and yet God's blessed you to become a father and you're a good father and when somebody compliments you on being a good daddy they oh no you know man I'm just trying to do my best to survive no brother you are doing more than just surviving the Lord has blessed you to become what you did not have but the enemy always wants us to downplay our identity and then call it humility I'm trying to show you that our being gets affected and the challenge is when she touched Jesus, the bleeding stopped. It fixed the bleeding, but it didn't fix the being. Are y'all hearing what I said? And here she is now with the challenge because her bleeding has stopped, but her being has not resumed. And I came, I rushed out of my service. I ran today like I was a guest preacher and, and they had just given me my offer and I ran out the door this morning. I did. I left them in the middle of praise. I was like the Holy Ghost. I, they looked up. At one moment I was there. Next morning they looked up. I was gone. But you know why I rushed over here? I rushed over here to preach to somebody. I'm almost done. I got nine minutes left and I'm gone. I, I rushed over here to preach to somebody who's stuck between bleeding and being. And your testimony is you are no longer bleeding. But if we take a look at it, you're no longer being either. My issue has been resolved, but I, I'm not quite free to 
be. My, I'm no longer bleeding, but I haven't quite found my, my juice to step into my own and to walk into what God called me to be. And I'm here to suggest to you that God does not want you in this year to simply no longer bleed. God's design for you this year is to be. Look at somebody and just tell them be. Now, when I say be, you got to understand that being is an important thing and some of us are not free to be. And the problem with not being free to be, hope you catch this, is that it, when you're not free to be, then you're bound to do. What does that mean? It means if I don't define myself by being, then I have to define myself by doing, which is why I'm tired and frustrated and run down trying to please everybody because I keep trying to do enough to hopefully be accepted because I don't accept myself at a level of being. And so now I've become a robot and I've become a slave and a servant to everybody around me trying to do enough. Now, I know some folks are looking at me funny because you think I'm talking about your relationship with people. I'm talking about your relationship with God. If you don't understand that the cross of Calvary freed you to be, then here you are judging yourself every time you uh, not cross a T or every time you fail to dot an I and you will think God's out to get you and God's out to judge you. You started a New Year's fast and slipped up day three and now you're saying, Lord, I repent all over again Will you save me because you think you lost your salvation because you messed around and ate something or did something you shouldn't have done. Why? Because we have brought doing into our relationship with God when the Lord called us to be. I mean, even in holiness, he said, be holy, for I am holy. He didn't tell you to do holy, but the church has made holiness about doing. Don't touch this. Don't taste that. Don't go there. Don't have that. When holiness was never about doing, it was supposed to be about being. And how holy can I be? Even if I abstain from everything you told me to abstain from, if I don't embrace who God made me, I'm still not holy because my God is not broken, which means God didn't design for me to be broken either and I came to Newport News to tell somebody this is your year to be God wants you to be all God calls you to be God wants you to exist whether they agree with you or not whether they like you or not whether they accept you or not whether it is they embrace you or not I have bled too long for God to heal me and I go back in my shell and pretend to be a smaller version of me I I know I got some growing to do but God knows this is my year to make up in my mind I will never shrink again somebody ought to holler B I'm, I'm, I'm done let me throw one thing at you I, I got two but, but I probably just throw one at you I'm going to give you one and I'll let you go we'll see how we get with time I like to obey my time how do we embrace the freedom to be? Here's, if I don't say anything else, you got to take this. The freedom to be requires ownership of your authenticity. If you're going to be free to be, you're going to have to take ownership of your authenticity. So the Bible says that mother came up, touched the hem of his garment, and she was freed from her bleeding. And then the text says, in essence, she tried to go away privately. She touched him. Immediately her bleeding stopped. And her instinct was to hide. <sighs> See, when you're used to hiding bound, you'll hide free. <laughs> I'm no longer bleeding, but my instinct is to act like I did when I was. So here she is healed, running. And Jesus asks, who touched me? Now that's interesting because I would think Jesus isn't asking a question to which he doesn't know the answer. He's Jesus. 
he's not asking to get information, which is what's so funny about his the, the discourse with him and his disciples, because his disciples are, are responding to him as if they're going to educate Jesus, right? Jesus, everybody's been touching you like the man doesn't know everybody's been, I mean, come on. He's not asking because he is void of an answer. He's asking then to make her come forward. He asks the question to demand of her that she come forward and identify herself. And so the Bible says when she saw she could no longer be hidden, then she came forward. And I'm here to tell you that in this season of your life, you can no longer be hidden. I want to tell you that you have officially hit the season of your life where God's not going to allow your gift and your vision and your talent and your ability to be hidden. God's not, God put too much investment into you for you to keep hiding and shrinking and going back into a cocoon and into a cave. No, you have outgrown that space. That season of isolation has come to an end and the Lord is saying, come out of hiding. I don't know who needs to hear it. I would wish I did because you and I would just go right on over here in Denby, find some lunch and we could talk about this over some wings and things but reality is whoever you are the Lord is calling you out of hiding he's calling you I know you've been used to it I know you've grown accustomed to it I know you've gotten used to just existing in your own quarantine space I know you've gotten used to just journaling your dreams you don't even share them anymore with people because you've grown so discouraged by dissenters but God said I'm calling you out of hiding I'm calling you out of hiding and so much I'm going to ask who touched me and I'm going to wait. Keep in mind that Jesus is now late to Jairus' house. The Bible shows us Jesus is now so late to Jairus' house that Jairus' daughter has died. And Jesus will have to raise her from the dead. He says, I don't care. I'll just up the miracle I give her. But I am not leaving until whoever just touched me comes forward. I'm not going to. This will not be the year that you just slip in the grace center, get a miracle from God, and go home and be the same person. No, baby. You are not going to get to come in here this year and receive the miracle, but not feel confident enough to give your gift to the kingdom. This is not going to be the year that you just slip in and receive from God and tell them thank you on your way out the door. We're going to hold up the service till we identify who this is. I know you thought that I came to preach a sermon, but really this is a station identification. It is time for you to come out with your hands up. The Holy Ghost has got you under arrest, and we need to figure out who is it today who touched Jesus during worship. I know everybody was praising God, but somebody really touched him this morning during worship. It's why the glory of the Lord is in the place. It's why the presence of God is here. Somebody came here tonight with a need. Somebody came to church this morning with some bleeding and you touched him. And that's why something has been happening in the atmosphere. And God said, I, I came to give you something more than what you thought. I know you thought you just came for bleeding, but I'm getting ready to heal your being too. Somebody holler who touched me. That's his question in your prayer life this week. That's what God wants to know is will you identify yourself? And here's my point for all of the people who are afraid to identify yourself to Jesus. You want to shout Q? If you were bold enough to come to him bleeding, you ought to be bold enough to come to him being. That was better than my church said amen. If you had enough faith to drag a trail of blood in, into the house of God, if you had enough faith to drag your hurts and your fears and to cast your cares, then you ought to also have enough faith to be able to lift your hands and tell them thank you that you're no longer bleeding. And I came to tell you that God is calling you forth and that brokenness will not be your portion in this season. I came to tell you that God is coming for everything else everything else the stuff you thought you had to live without the stuff you thought you couldn't uh, have in your life the ways you compromise and told yourself I'll just be okay God if you could just fix the bleeding I'll make my ends meet over here if you could just fix the bleeding I'll handle everything over there God told me to tell you no I'm coming for all of it God said you don't have to settle for any one area of your life being in deficiency who touched me 
you're going to have to own your identity and say, it was me. It was me. Lord, I know nobody else in my family has been praying for a breakthrough. It was me. Everybody else was at Christmas just celebrating Santa Claus and exchanging gifts, but I was the one who slipped in the bathroom, went in the intercession because my cousin told me that they had cancer, and, and I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I know I'm here to just drink eggnog and, and enjoy myself, but there's too much Holy Ghost in me. I got too much of an intercessor in me for me to just text with my cousins and my family and my friends and not take this to you. It was me. God says, own your identity. I guess I'll give you the second thing then. Freedom to be means that it, 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 it means you got to own your identity, but, but, but it also, secondly, releases an openness to adjustment. And not just an ownership of, of authenticity, but an ownership, but, but an openness to adjustment. Here's what he says. He said, who touched me? And she identifies it was her by coming back. And here's what Jesus says to her. Catch this. He says, your faith has made you well. King James says, has made you whole. The Message Bible said there, he says, you took a risk trusting me, and now you're healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. What it says in King James is, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Now, why do I say adjustment? Here it is. You haven't had peace in a long time. You grew used to managing pain. You've grown accustomed to dealing with what you had to face. He says, but I want you to know something about your faith. I know you thought your faith would stop the bleeding, and it did. But your faith has done more in your life than stop your bleeding. Your faith has also reignited your being. He says your faith has made you whole. Whole there is, is more than healed. I gotta go. Whole is more than healed. What he's literally telling her is your faith has now set you up to be restored. So the money you lost The time you lost, the status you lost, hallelujah, the influence you lost, all of the stuff that the bleeding took from you, I'm getting ready to restore it back to you, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Give me some strings if you got it. Whatever it was that life stole from you. Whatever it was that life took from, I know, I know you've been so focused on the bleeding. I know you've been so focused on the bruising. I know you've been so focused on the brokenness that you forgot you're owed some stuff. Who God, you're owed some stuff. You've been owed some stuff that you didn't forgot about because you learned how to live without it. But the Lord's getting ready to restore. I know you think I'm crazy. Let me throw you some Bible. He said, I will restore to you the years. That the canker worm and the caterpillar and the locust have eaten away. He said, I'm God enough to give you years back. In other words, I'll give you strength so that you'll feel like 30 at 50. I'll give you strength so that you'll still have the vigor at 60 that you would have had at 45. He said, I'll give you strength. I will, I will renew your fountain of youth. I will give you the fortitude you need to be able to be who you need to be. God said, I, you worried about getting married too late? I'll touch your womb. You worried about a biological clock? Do you understand that I'm God enough that if I want you to have a baby, I'll but you forgot I'm the God of Sarah. You forgot I'm the God of Elizabeth. You think there's a different God than the God who could touch a dead womb and you worry because you pushing 40 and you haven't found a man. God said, I will restore. And you've got one job. He says, I want you to be. And Lord, how does that manifest? Here's what he said. And I close. 
I ain't got to hoop it out, do I? Do I got to holler? Ain't it all right? We know the Lord is all right. I'm preaching because some of us are not all right. He said, this is what I want you to do. Go in peace. Go in peace. First of all, hard enough, go. You crawled in here. But you're going to walk out. You crawled into that job. Just thankful somebody would hire you. But you're going to walk out. You crawled into that relationship. Just happy anybody took interest after a season of disappointment. He says, but I want you to go. In peace. In peace? Why peace? Because torment has been your companion for the last 12 years. And if you don't go in peace, then the enemy will lie to you about the miracle that's already happened. See, if I were the devil, I gotta stop. If I were the devil and I couldn't stop you from touching God, then I would make it my objective to try to make you think you never did. I would try to make you think that in spite of your touching him, oh, that didn't do anything for you. You see that short little fat preacher up there talking to you. He did. That sounds good. He didn't went to somebody's school and got educated and he knows just what to say. And now he got you all emotional and you in here crying and praising God. But you know ain't nothing going to change. Shut up, devil. This isn't poetry. This isn't a dissertation. This isn't something I did because I went and took some class. This is the living word of the Most High God that's being delivered with express mail with somebody's name on it. This isn't something that I came up with. This is the word of God. Jesus said, go in peace, in peace, in peace, not in pieces. And you can't appreciate peace unless you've ever lived in pieces. A piece of me over here and a piece of me over there and a piece of me over here and a piece of me over there. And God said, I want you to go in peace. Can I say one more thing about it? He says, go in peace. Because without it, you might live in anxiety. Anxiety is about worry about what hasn't even happened yet. It is to worry about something. It's not even manifested, but my emotions are reacting to it as if it did. <laughs> it's to have real life emotional reaction over something without a real life manifestation. I'm fighting a ghost. He said, I want you to go in peace so you don't worry if the issue is coming back. I want you to live in peace so that you don't allow the threat of what was to create anxiety about what could be. I want you to live in peace. No wonder why the Bible says to us, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I'm in Philippians 4 and 6. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind. He said, I answer prayers with peace. You're asking for promises, but long before I send you the promise, I give you the peace. Anybody ever rented an apartment or a house? What do they ask you for in the beginning once they approve you? They say, can you show up not only first month's rent, but can you also put down a security deposit? Security? It's a peace deposit. We want you to put down some money that shows your, the landlord, gives the landlord peace because the landlord don't know you. So it's going to give the landlord peace that if you default, on your payment or there's a need for repair that's your fault or something else then here's some money we can pull from it here it is if you happen to live out the term of your lease and everything's okay we'll give you your peace back 
I'll give you the security. What he said is God works the same way. God said, I know you're nervous about how I'm able to pay rent on your promise. So then when you pray to me and you submit your prayer to me, the first thing I do is give you a security deposit. I give you peace. And peace is there as a security deposit for the promise. I know you're waiting on the promise to come in every first of the month. But what I'm going to do is give you peace that if nothing else, you can rely back on the peace while you wait on the promise. And that is why when peace like a river attended my way and sorrows like sea, uh, 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 billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well with my soul. I have a peace about it. I'm talking to somebody who your money hasn't changed and, and your situation isn't different yet and you're going to leave church today to still go back to the same struggles that you have let me tell you how you know that this word is real in your life God gave you a peace I'm done Howard Thurman says in whatever sense this year is a new year for you may the moment find you eager and unafraid ready to take it by the hand with joy and gratitude in other words whatever this year is going to be for you and we don't know what the year will ultimately be for you but we do know this may the year find you ready and eager to take it by the hand with joy and gratitude the Lord whatever is before me and I don't know what's before me, but I know this. I will be what you called me to be. And I am going to walk into this unafraid to exist as who you made me. I'm done. But I want people who remember what it's like to be broken. And you're glad that God will take you from pieces into peace. I just want you to stand and worship him right now. In whatever way you got to worship, I want you to worship him. Whatever kind of praise you've got, whatever kind of gratitude you've got, whatever it is, I just want you. Hallelujah. God, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm praising you. I'm worshiping you because I remember what it was like to be in pieces. I remember what it was like to have nothing. I remember what it was like to bleed. I remember what it was like to be without. And here it is. You've blessed me. You've brought me. You've, you've taught me. You've healed me. And if you could heal my bleeding, glory, then I believe by faith you're going to heal my being. If you could fix my bleeding, if you could heal my bleeding, if you could take care of my bleeding, if you could have my bleeding Lord you brought me out of more than this and if you could do that in my life then I'm crazy enough to believe that you are more than able to do this I thank you Lord I bless your name I give you praise I exalt you I magnify you Lord today I worship you for the rest of what I need I praise you today in advance for the rest of 2024 I thank you that this is my year to be this is my year to live this is my year that you're gonna bless me to evolve I, I won't be stuck bleeding the rest of my life this is my time to move forward in my purpose I don't know if I've done this before. I don't know if I've ever done this before here. It's not a gimmick, but I just felt it quickly. This is what the Lord has just instructed me to do. I feel a conviction in my heart, and it's going to be weird, but this is going to be our altar call today, if I may. I need a basket. Is that okay? I want you to lay it at the altar for me. And this is what I heard. This might be for two people, but this is what we're going to do today. I just heard it in my spirit. The Holy Spirit said, write down every excuse that keeps you from fully being who you are. I don't care what it is. Nobody's going to read it. 
if you need, they're going to get some paper, okay, because I know we're technological. Now, some of y'all got paper, you know, if you're willing to share it with somebody. I don't care. And, and you, you ain't got to put in the fancy words because only God's going to read it. Nobody's going to go through it. Hallelujah. Is this okay, overseer? In my final moments, and I'm going to let you go. In my final moments, the Lord told me to have a funeral. We're going to turn Sunday morning into a funeral. We're going to have a funeral right now. I already got the casket. We're going to have a burial today. And what we're going to bury is every reason that keeps us from being. Fear. Shame. Guilt worried about what others think lack of resources I don't feel I'm wanted enough insecurity disappointment I don't care what it is church hurt I don't care what it is if you need some paper thank you very much if you need some paper we'll be glad to get you I'm going to take a minute on this I'm going to take a quick minute on this because it's worth it it's worth it it's worth it if you're home you can participate and do the same thing you might not be able to come to and, and, and put it in this coffin but create a trash can in your own house you know, that's all we're going to do is throw it away today we're going to throw away excuses that keep us from being glory to God I don't have to lay my hands on you I don't have to prophesy to you all we got to do today is, is forget those things which are behind and reach for those things that are here glory to God and by faith we're going to declare and it's, once you've got it, come on, feel free. We're going we're gonna to just commit this thing. I'm going to do a committal. We're just going to commit this thing to the Lord. God, I'm moving this way. I'm doing this because this is my sign that I'm not going to let it hold me back another day. I'm not going to let it hold me back another day. You make all things new. I don't care what my mistakes were. I don't care what stood in my way. Glory to God. I declare that today is my day to walk in newness. Hallelujah. I'm going to be free to be. I wait for you if you're still writing I will wait for you today I ain't got no problem I will wait for you today this is my assignment Woo, God I feel your anointing bless you Who needed to hear this word today? I was, y'all bring it down just for a minute. I was, I was chewing on this. I told you I was chewing on this in Italy, and your pastor and I were roommates. So I was talking this, I was talking his ear off. I said, man, I feel like God wants to deal with me about the woman issue of blood. And I, I mean, every day I just kept talking about it. Till finally, he said, "Tell you what, look, you come to my church in a few weeks. Just preach that. I don't know what you had planned to preach. Just preach this, cause you keep talking my head off." Now I realize your pastor loves you so much. He felt in his spirit that somebody needed to hear this word today. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for tolerating me. I know I was long. Wow. Bless you. 
Anybody else? All right. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty in his providence to take out of this world the excuses, the reasons, the things responsible that have kept us bleeding and not being, we therefore now come to commit it to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, awaiting that day of judgment when the grave and the sea shall give up their dead. And I heard a voice saying unto me, write these things down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord, for they shall cease from their labors and their works to follow. Today, Lord, we commit these excuses in the ground. I say excuses not to devalue the experiences, but to identify that in this season of our lives, they cannot hold us back. Today, we declare we are free by faith, not by feeling. Feelings will catch up with faith. But we declare today we are free by faith from that in which has kept us from being. And as we discard of these things today, we make a commitment to you that we will go in peace and not in pieces. We will continue the journey you've called us to. And I thank you in advance for somebody under the sound of my voice that their 12 years are over and that the journey hallelujah that has brought us to this place you have done a work within us that has shifted the rest of our lives and we praise you and we magnify you and we give you glory for fresh life and for freedom to be in Jesus name somebody who believes God take the next few moments and give him radical praise open your mouth open up your mouth and tell the Lord thank you bless his name magnify him give him praise he whom the son sets free is free indeed I dare you to walk up to about five people and just shout it out tell them I'm free to be 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 you're free I'm free we're all free I'm no longer bound no more chains holding me my soul is resting and it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. I'm free to be myself. I'm free to be who God called. I'm free to walk in victory. Woo. my fleeting moments together if there's somebody in this room or attached to this servant know Christ if you're in this room or you're attached to this moment and you don't know Christ as your Savior if you have never accepted the free gift of salvation freedom goes so far back it's not even new your freedom is 2,000 years old waiting on you with a claim ticket to come and claim it Glory to God. There's no use in living in sin and going to hell when God has already paid the price through Jesus Christ to set you free. You've got an invitation and God is waiting on your RSVP. Backslider, I'm talking to you too. If perhaps you stepped away, walked away, you felt like you haven't been in fellowship with God. Lord, it's been cold and I just haven't felt anything. And, and today I want to renew it. I want a fresh start with you. If I'm talking to you at all, I want you to walk this aisle. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be ashamed. But if you don't know Christ or if you want to rededicate your life, I don't care if you got a title. I don't care if you're a deacon. I don't care if you're in the choir. I don't care if you're on the praise tape. Come on. This is my day today. This is my day today. This is my day today. Today, I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to start with God. Is there anybody else 
who wants to come for Christ who wants to come for Christ hallelujah may your life never be the same again in the name of Jesus somebody needs a church home they're gonna minister to her somebody needs a church home you've been saying you've been flirting with churches because you're really kind of hurt and burnt and mad you know and so it's like well I'm gonna just kind of try this church or try that church but you haven't been planted I don't care how pretty a seed is I don't care how pretty a seed is that seed cannot grow unless it's planted you can't look at a seed in a window and expect to get a harvest from it. The only way that seed is going to produce fruit is that it's planted. And there's some people that the enemy hasn't made you give up on Christ, but you've given up on church. And it's been difficult. Or you said, I'm going to go to church, but you know, I'm going to do this on my terms. And I'm going to just kind of come and I won't go and I won't because I ain't going to never trust the church like that again. You want somebody to trust you again after you hurt them and broke their heart. You want a second chance. I want to give an opportunity for somebody who needs a second chance. This is a good church. It's big enough to hold you is small enough to know you I want you to come and make this church your home you don't need to know my church my church is not important I am, I'm here on assignment and today I am a member of the Grace Center y'all hear me <laughs> glory to God if you need a church home I want to offer this church and this pastor is solid ground come on right now come 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 right. Come on, church. You ought to celebrate people coming for Christ and for church. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Don't delay. Make this year the year that you're planted. Make this year the year that you're planted. I'm rooted in Christ. I'm rooted in church. I'm rooted in Christ. I'm rooted in church. I'm rooted in Christ. I'm rooted in church. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all gonna make me shout out of here today. Woo! Glory to God. And the Lord is adding to the church. Such as should be saved. Glory to God. Now let me tell y'all something in case you don't already know. There is no perfect church. There are no perfect people. If it was perfect, it became imperfect the moment we walked in. The church is the bride of Christ. And if I showed you a picture of my wife, you would clearly see that the bride and the groom are not the same person. You know, she's a lot better looking than I am. Right? In the same sense, the church is the bride of Christ. The bride is trying to look like the groom. The church is trying to be like Christ. But the church is not Christ no more than I'm not my wife. My wife is not me. Don't you allow the flaws you find in church among people to make you give up on God or even on God's love for the church. God created the church and as imperfect as it is, God's married to it. And I want this to be an intentional year for you. They're going to take you in the back. Whatever your procedure is, how y'all pray and lead people into their spiritual decisions, y'all will handle that. I'm, I'm just here to preach. But I will tell you before they take you back that God's design and desire for you and all of us this year is to be planted and to grow. I declare this will be your best growth year you have ever had in your life. Why? Because the Lord has stopped your bleeding and because the Lord has renewed your being. I want every soul in this building just point your hands toward this altar as we just pray over them. They will lead them into their spiritual decision but we want to pray a covering. Lord thank you for your son and daughters who you have brought to this altar to make spiritual decisions today and perhaps any others who are online I thank you today that what you have ignited in their hearts will be a fire that will not burn out I thank you Holy Spirit for continuing the work you've put down in them may this be their best year of growth may this be a year of covering may this be a year that they discover more of you than they ever have before we plead the blood over their life we cover them in prayer and we thank you Lord for the harvest that you're bringing out of their life and every life connected in Jesus name somebody shout amen come on let's rejoice for the soul Woo, my god my god now i'm i'm gonna pray us out the pastor's given me the the permission to pray us out but i want to do one thing before we leave if you know me to know me you can stand i'm letting you go y'all ain't gotta sit down because i'm leaving too my feet hurt so we're gonna all leave together to know me is to know I don't do pressure. It's not, I ain't no, I'm not a gimmickster. I don't have a prophecy. I don't see nobody's mate. I don't see a new job for anybody. And if the Lord gave me that, I'd give it to you, but I don't see it. I ain't got no word of prophecy. I ain't got all that. It, I gave you what I had. That's the best I had. I want us to respond to that word. I want us to respond to that word. Now, I'm not about to do a hundred dollar line come stand over here fifty dollars come stand over here we ain't got time for that it's lunchtime. it's time to go 
But more importantly, I don't have to do that in a house where people have been taught. You don't have to play games with people when people have been taught. I want us to respond to the word of God. I want us to respond to the word of God if we can, to the best that you can. I'm asking if you can to just get a $20 seed. It's that simple. Just if we can, $20. If $20 is too much, then get as close as you can. If $20 is too little, then give $20 five times. Right? I don't care, but I want to say at least everybody at least who can to get a $20 seat in your hand. Why 20? Because what the 20 is a two, it represents the idea of God starting something or doing something again. That something that I thought was dead and gone and in the dumps and God is going to resurrect, he's going to do it again. I want everybody to get in on this who can. I'm going to do the same thing. I would never ask you to do something that I don't do. I'm going to sow the same thing. Glory to God. But I want you to sow it. If you can, most of you are going to sow electronically. If you don't sow electronically, if you want to give, uh, they have other apparatuses. Y'all know your giving techniques. So I don't have to do that. I'm going to bless this offering, and then I'm going to release you to go. Can everybody do me a favor this week? I want you to find one person this week. I want you to come across one person, just one person this week. And what I want you to do is I want you, for as much as you're willing, to share with them some, po some portion of your story. Some portion. You ain't got to give them the whole book. But some portion of your story that has, that has been God making you into who you are. Because you never know how your story impacts somebody else with the courage to be who God called them to be. I don't care who it is. It could be a stranger. It could be somebody you know. It could be somebody you never met. But I want you to impact one person this week with your story. You don't have to invite them to your church. That's cool. You, if you can, fine. But I want you to at least impact them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and what Christ has done for you. Can you do that? And I believe that if you do that and you continue to do that, you would be surprised how many lives you touch from people who needed to know what God has done. I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be shared. Yes, all right, well then let me bless the offering and then they will come and they will close you out uh, as is their custom. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the giving. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the faith that we are attaching to this moment. I thank you that by faith, Lord, you have already made it possible for us to be able to walk into our future. Now, God, I pray that every sower, perhaps somebody wanted to sow, they didn't really have anything to sow. God, they're sowing faith because the real seed is the word of God anyway. So I'm sowing my faith into the word. I pray that every seed that has been sown here today, you would remember it. You would write it down. You would acknowledge it. And then in turn, you would bring about the harvest in due time. Some of us don't even need money back. We need opportunities back. God, we need peace back. Lord, we need joy back. There are things we need that money cannot buy. But I thank you that you will see and hear our obedience. And as a result, you will make a way out of no way. Be glorified is our prayer and I thank you today that as we leave this place we leave knowing that you haven't just freed us from the being but you have uh, uh, from the bleeding but you have freed us for the being and we rejoice in it in Jesus name let every sower shout amen I love you with Jesus joy they're gonna come and dismiss this service amen amen praise God well before we um we finish what a power word. Gosh, that was such a powerful word. I thank God. Praise God. We thank God for Pastor Rousey. A wonderful message. I just want to let you all know um, as we close that you're going to be able to get your bands and the information for our financial fast. So they're going to be handing those out. We want you to take this and y'all don't just take this and you know how we do. We put it in the car and we never see it again. Okay. Um, we want you to take this, put it on your refrigerator, put it on a place where you frequent. I, that's what I like to do, y'all. Put it in the kitchen, put it somewhere where you know you're going to look at it, and walk through this fast. It's going to be the 15th, which is tomorrow. Everybody say tomorrow. 
So it starts tomorrow through the 31st, and it's going to be a powerful moment. I know we're going to have moments of prayer, so you want to make sure if you are not connected to us through Facebook or YouTube that you're a part, that you um, like and share so that you can know when we'll have prayer lives. There are a list of do's and don'ts. You can read through this yourself. Um, but the things that we want you to do, of course, is pay your bills, take care of your household, purchase the essentials, the necessary things. But then those recreational things for the next 15 days, we're going to be consecrating. So that means we're not going to be doing those activities that are entertaining for us, that online shopping. That's going to be a sacrifice for me, okay? Um, <laughs> So we're going to stay away from that Amazon Prime and all those wonderful things that we can do. Um, and no ex, you know, extra purchases, no money lending, which is also important. And so we're just going to consecrate ourselves in terms of our spending, okay? And then your band is going to be your reminder. So every time you, know, you get tempted, because it does happen, we may think about it. You look down at your band, you have it somewhere again where you remember, and then you say, oh, you know what? I'm fasting, I'm consecrating. And then also the last one, I'm gonna read this. No pedicures, manicures, facials, massages, no hair. Okay, so it is y'all, okay? <laughs> Somebody face that, oh my, okay? <laughs> right, oh, no hair, look, add that, no haircuts, no edge ups, okay? We're all in this together, amen? <laughs> okay? So make sure that you take advantage of this opportunity, and it is an opportunity, y'all. Please do not think this is just something random. Pastor uh, said, preach a powerful word, and again, reminding us that it's timely. So if God is asking us to do this, there's a reason, y'all. So don't just think this is just something I'm doing just because. No, if God is telling us to, t to consecrate in this time, there's a reason for that. And even being a good steward of what you don't spend because you're probably going to come out on the other side of these 15 days with a little more than you normally have. All right? So we want to be good stewards of that. And then our focus points, just so you know, tithe and offering, budgeting, emergency fund, our life happens funds, giving, retirement savings, college fund, um, extra cash to pay debts. So, y'all, this is a strategic consecration, okay? So that means you're going to, again, come out with tools and resources so it's worth it to invest in doing this so we really want you to commit to this for the next 15 days and like i said join us make sure you um, have your website bookmarked make sure you know are following the social media platform account we want everyone to be all in say all in all in okay we are all in these next two weeks right and we're going to have testimonies of what god has done all right, so if that um, concludes, I'm just going to go ahead and pray us out. God, we thank you for the way you showed up on today. I thank you, Lord God, that not only have you stopped the bleeding, but you are, have empowered us in our being. God, we pray that you have blessed the man of God for how he has poured out, poured back into him 100-fold. We pray right now as we step into our time of consecration and fasting that we focus our attention on you. God, we expect to experience and receive from you in fresh ways over these next two weeks. So we thank you for strengthening and sustaining us, so oh God, so that we are able to walk through this fast, not in condemnation, guilt, or shame, but empowered to do the things that you are asking us to do right now for our good for the better of our households and our families and so we thank you for change god and transformation we pray you will bless our pastor and his safe return home god we plead the blood over his life we thank you for angels keeping watch over him and we thank you for this coming week that everything we experience god is going to allow us to remember what you have done on this day we thank you for the funeral god we thank you, Father God, for what is gone, Lord God, no longer to return. And we give you glory for what we will experience in the coming weeks. I ask all these things, and I bless the people in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. God bless you.